Jews back then. All right, so how is it today that the people who are claiming to be the Jews don't look, they don't fit the description of the biblical Jews? I want to show y'all something. Where y'all see yourself on this sign on the far right? On y'all far right. Where y'all see yourself on this sign? Because on this side is what our oppressors, the names our oppressors gave us. On this side is what God called us in the Bible. So where would you find yourself on the sign? Judah, Judah. Judah right? American black. Do you know what that means? No. So we're from the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. Israel's name used to be Jacob. God changed Jacob's name to Israel. And these people have a and these people had a certain uh, 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 meaning behind their name. Give me Genesis 32 real quick. I want to show you what it, how important your name is. That's what we were just going over right here. How important it is in the name, because you won't find African American in the Bible. You won't find Haitian, Jamaican, all these names that they gave us in the Bible. They don't mean anything. Huh? You'll find Judah in the Bible, right? And we're gonna show you that. But watch this real quick. Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. Uh -huh. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob. So he's talking to Jacob. God told him that his name was not gonna be called Jacob anymore from this point forward. But what? But Israel. But who? But Israel. Uh -huh. For as a prince hast thou power with God. So the name Israel means a prince that has power with God. At one point in time, we had power with the Father. Why? Because he was our God and no other God. Give me that in Joel too. God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob, like we just showed you, name was changed to Israel. And these are all Israel's sons right here, whom we descend from. I myself am from the tribe of Judah. But watch this. <clears throat> Give me Joel 2.27. Joel chapter 2 verse 27 uh -huh. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel So the Most High is talking through jo the Most High is talking through Joel right now The Most High is telling us that he knows that we he's in the midst of Israel Remember This is the 12 the 12 patriarchs of Israel Read And that I am the Lord your God and none else He's the Lord who, who's God? Your God and none else so despite what they tell you in the Christian church, God is the only God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the only God of one people. He only came to save one people. His laws were only given to one group of people. Did you know that? Yeah, you should come around here real quick. Now, brothers, come, come around here real quick. I want to show y'all something. This is a big one right here. Hey, real quick, I ain't done with y'all. Hold on real quick. I want to show y'all something else. So Check that out right there. He's going to stay in that too. Y'all brothers, that's name. Oh, y'all come around. Come around real quick. So check this out, check this out real quick. Your name is Judah, right? According to the Bible. Right. You know how that important how important that is? Right. You know who else in the Bible came from the tribe of Judah? Right. Watch this. Give me the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. A very famous person in the Bible came from the tribe of Judah. This is why we gotta show you how important your lineage is. How, you, how important your heritage is. Read. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord. Who's our Lord? God. Jesus, right? It said it is evident that our Lord, meaning there's proof that Christ, read, that our Lord sprang out of Judah. What tribe? Sprang out of Judah. So Jesus the Christ 
came from the tribe of Judah. That's, that, that should be extremely important to y'all. Because why did they give us this image right here? If that's the case, that's written in the Bible. Why was they allowed, why was they giving up, why was we given this image right here? Y'all familiar with this image, right? Y'all see it all over? If you were to Google Jesus Christ, all of this stuff will pop up. Right, but the description don't fit that. The description don't fit that. Right, and we're going to show you out of the Bible what Christ actually looks like. Because it said he came from the tribe of Judah, right? Right. You see, have you heard this before? Watch this. Give me Revelation 1, and I'm going to show you why it was so important that they had to take this, this image from us. It's key why they did that, because they'll tell you, it don't matter what he looks like. Right. His message is the same, but it's not. Well, watch this. One, one and one. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So the revelation or the revealing of Jesus Christ. Watch this. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So it said his head and his hairs were white in color and woolly in texture. Who got woolly hair on the planet Earth? We do, right? Black people. Read, that's one, that's one strike for this, this devil right here. Watch this. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes were as a flame of fire. If you look closely at this picture on the far left, what color are the white parts of his eyes? Flame of fire. Flame of fire, but why is that though? Yeah, I know. Give me that real quick in Genesis. There's a reason why his eyes are that color and why we would see him in that color. It was prophesied of him in the book of Genesis. Watch this. Genesis chapter 49 verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. It says Christ's eyes when he comes shall be red with wine. He drank wine in moderation. He drank in moderation. Because they'll tell you in the Christian church it's forbidden to drink. But that's not true. What was Christ's first miracle? Huh? I don't know. Turning water into wine. Yeah. So he drunk that wine. It was at a wedding feast. He drunk that wine. Again, in moderation. We're not to get drunk, but we, but we can't drink. Because it makes you merry. Now go back to Revelation. Yeah. Read. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. And his eyes was as a flame of fire. Uh -huh. And his feet. And his feet. Now, John on the island of Patmos is now looking at Christ's feet. If I had, I, I can't see none of the, none of the tops of y'all feet, but I can pretty much bet that's the same color as your arms, your legs, your face. Watch this, read. And his feet, like unto fine brass. What color is brass? B-R-A-S-S. -S. It's like copper, right? Like a penny. Brown, like a derivative of brown. But let's see how dark this brass was. Read. As if they burned in a furnace. As if what? They burned in a furnace. So you take that brass and you burn it, what color is it coming out? If you burn anything, what color is it coming out? Black, black. It's coming out black, right? Yes, right? If you take anything and burn it. So that brass that was already brown, burned, it comes out even darker. So could that be possibly this, be this image right here? Absolutely not. But when you go to church, what's the last time your brother's been to church? Mm -hmm. You don't even know. Do you believe in the Bible? Y'all believe in the Bible, right? I believe in the Bible, but it's more so the Word. Who's giving you the Word? Who's giving you the Word? Yeah. The Most High God has given us the Word. That's so, right. Give me that in the book of uh, Psalms real quick. So what we're showing you, we just proved out of the Bible. A lot of people will say, oh, the Bible's written by a white man. No. We just read a description of the Messiah as a black man. And he lied, and the, this our oppressor, the so-called white man, gave us this. So you know he couldn't have wrote that in the Bible and then gave us this image. That wouldn't make any sense. Right. What's the song? Yeah. Man, look at Trill, man. I know. Psalms yeah. chapter 68, verse 11. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. So the Lord gave the word. It wasn't any other nation of people that gave us this word. The white man did not write the Bible. The Egypt, we did not get the Bible from the Egyptians. Book of the Dead. Like a lot of people like to tell us or say to us. The Most High gave the word to the prophets, and they spoke through it. Christ, the Most High, spoke through the prophets to the people. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today.
Angelo. Were given unto other people. They were taken from us, as a matter of fact. On auction slave blocks, they did not sell families together. They did not take a group of people, the mother, or the father, and the children together. They sold the mother off to Virginia, the father off to uh, 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 Alabama. How you doing, sis? Hello. All right, you take a look at that side right there, sis. Come over here on this side real quick. Well, you see yourself on this side right here. So on this side is what our oppressors told us when we got here on slave and safety. And on this side is what God called. On this side is what God called us. So what, what, what would you call yourself today if you had the, the option? American black. American black, right? So what does God call you? What's his name right here? Yeah. Judah. You want to know why that's important? Who else from the who else from the Bible came from the tribe of Judah? You don't know? Very prominent figure. We'll show you right now. Very prominent figure. You might not have known. Did you go to church? Do you believe in the Bible? You believe in the Bible, you believe in God, you don't go to church. It's good that you don't go to church, but may I ask why you don't go to church? Um, or why you haven't been? Oh, because of what I've experienced going to a Baptist church. And what were your... Right, God's been looking down upon people. Book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So it says it is evident, our daughter, right? So if he says something is evident, what does that mean? It's proof without a shadow of a doubt. All right, it says, who's our Lord and Savior? God. Lord and Savior. Jesus. Jesus, That's absolutely. Right. Jesus the Christ, right? Because God never walked the earth himself. He sent his son to be our Savior, right? Wow. right. Yes, sir. So it says it's evident that what? That our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Right, so it says that our Lord and Savior comes out of the tribe of Judah. So if you look at this sign right here, give me Jeremiah 14 and 2. This sign right here, it's showing you who the 12 tribes of Judah are. That's right. Because Jesus Christ, you remember when they crucified him and they put the inscription on top of the cross, what did that inscription say? What did they accuse him of? They accused him of claiming to be king of the Jews. At that time, guess it was another authority in power. So that would almost be like what? You're trying to, it's like treason. Because it's pretty much saying, no, if somebody come up right now and try to establish their own government, well, the United States government is already established. That's them almost trying to supersede and overthrow the government. At that time, you know who was in power? The Romans. The Romans, you know what race of people that is? Greeks, right? They were they were originally called Greeks, and then they changed their names to what? Romans. The Romans of back then. You are you familiar with? Uh, you know Little Caesar's Pizza, right? Yeah. What's the little picture on there? Is it a black man? No. What picture that is? A white man. It's a white man, Little Caesar. Caesar, that's an historical figure. Right. He was a so-called Roman. That's right. The Romans were guess what race of people today? Guess what race of people they are today? The white people. That's, that's, right. that's who they are. Right. So, when Jesus got uh, accused of being claiming to be king of the Jews, we're going to show you who the Jews were, what race of people were the Jews back then. Because today, who's claiming to be the Jews? White people, right? So, that's kind of strange that they would accuse Christ of being the king of the white people when he was already white. You understand, sis? It was a reason why that was a crime, why they tried to use that to accuse him. He was an innocent man, but they had to try to blame something on him. So that's what they used, but this is why. Read what you got. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Read. The Judah morning. So the tribe of Judah, there's 12 tribes that makes up God's holy nation. You're familiar with them, right, sis? Yeah, because you got, you remember Abraham, the patriarch? And then he had, he gave, he um, had a son named Isaac. And Isaac had a son named Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And from him comes the 12 tribes of Israel. These people right here, right? So this is referring to Judah. Anytime the Bible makes mention of Judah, it's referring to these three people right here. Because today in society, right? These three people right here, do they, 
Do they get along well with each other? Oh no, they do not. They don't. The Haitians, Jamaicans, and the blacks, we don't get along with each other. But back then, we actually lived together. And we understood that we were the same people. Because guess what? Our oppressors made us to believe now that we're a different race of people. Right. And we all came out the same station. dropped off in different places. Different places. But guess what? Our oppressors were successful in dividing and conquering us. Right. But this is who it's talking to. The so-called Haitians, Jamaicans, and African Americans. Because they are Judah, according to the scripture. We're going to find that out today, sis. Read what you got. Judah Hardin Read. and the gates thereof language. Read. They are black. They are what? They are black. You hear that, sis? The, the people of Judah, they are black. Unto what? Unto the ground. Unto the ground. So, you see the green grass right there? That patch of grass right there behind you? That's the ground, right? If you was to plant your little garden, right? If you do any gardening? No. No, if you was to, sis, and you dig up the dirt, you get underneath the soil, because that's what you got to do to get the seed down there. Mm -hmm. What color is the dirt going to be once you start digging it up? It's going to be brown. It's not going to be no other color. It's going to be brown. And the Bible describes Judah as looking just like the dirt in the ground. You understand that, sis? So, Judah, that's who they really are. They are the so-called blacks and uh, black Hispanics. They are dark skin tone color people. So how is it that it's another race saying they're the Jews? Because the word Jews comes from the, the word Judah. Right. That was just a short, like, hey, you from the kingdom of Judah, you're a Jew. You understand, sis? It was just a short way of saying you're, you're from the tribe of Judah, or the kingdom of nation of Judah. We just called ourselves Jews back then. All right, so how is it today that the people who are claiming to be the Jews don't look, they don't fit the description of the biblical Jews? We're going to show you. Give me that in Revelations 2 and 9. This is what happened to, our, to us. This is what happened to the Jews in history, sis. Because you see this right here? You're familiar with this, right? You see, like, you know some history, right? So you're familiar with the transatlantic slave trade, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, what happened to us uh, during the transatlantic slave trade? Give me just a brief summary. Uh, we were taken from our home country. What else? Uh, we were stripped from everything that we knew. Stripped from everything Family, that we knew. Heritage. Culture, heritage. Okay. And then uh, give me Jeremiah 17 or 4 right after this. You, you, Great point, sis. You made a lot of great points. That's exactly what happened to us. But this is how they're now claiming to be us. We're going to show it to you out of the Bible because they're not the real Jews. They're actually living a, a false reality. They've stolen our identity as, and they're claiming to be the people of God right now. And the true people of God, listen to what the Bible says their condition is. Read. I'm sorry. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. So Jesus Christ says he knows the works of his people, the tribulation that they're going through, and then the poverty that they're living in. Why, would this, why is this our condition? Do you have an idea, sis? Today? Yes. Oh. Because the Jewish people, is that their condition? Oh, no, they're, they're rich. They're rich, right? They're actually, they're you go to New rich. York, a lot of the diamond, um, Stores and all the stuff that sell the jewelry, they actually own these things. I believe in Kemet. You say what? Kemet. That's what you believe in? I mean, Kemet used to be what's, what is called Egypt at the time, where the Nile River was, where mm -hmm. it was the oldest university, where the Greeks, they took away all that knowledge and power and made it theirs. So, so, so but you say that's what you kind of believe? Uh, yeah, I'm a family. Oh, that's so you're a family that was, you, that's what you were taught. Okay, understood, sis. So, we're going to show you after this scripture what Kemet comes from, all right, sis? Because we're not the same as the Egyptians. A lot of us think all black people are the same. That's not true according to the Bible. All right, and actually history. But it's just a lie that's been perpetuated so we don't realize what the people the Jews of the Bible. Right. Right, read what you got. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. God says, even though my people are going through these things, they're suffering tribulation and poverty, they're rich. Because you know why? Because Jesus the Christ, he only came for them. That salvation that everybody loves to claim hold and hold on to of John 3, 16, 
they don't have the proper understanding that that's actually only referring to the 12 tribes of Israel. That's, that's right. right. That suffered the curses that God put on them for breaking his covenant. Right. That's why Christ had to come and be a savior for us. No other nation been through the curses that God judged his people under. Right. And Christ was the only one that would have been able to redeem us from these conditions. All right, sis? That's why we're rich. We don't. And I know the blasphemy. Blasphemy. You hear? You familiar with that term? Blasphemy? Not really. Not really. <laughs> blasphemy, that's a humongous lie. If somebody say, hey, that's blasphemy right there. That's against the scripture. That means that's a lie. So Christ is saying he knows the blasphemy or the lies of who? Of them which say they are Jews. Whoa. It's a people Christ says is saying they are Jews. And are what? And are not. And they're not really his people, the Jews. You see that, sis? That's crazy. Christ prophesied this during his days because he's seen the future. He knew that when this would happen to his people, give me that in Luke 21, verse 20. This was a prophecy that Christ prophesied. Because guess what happened to the Jews in 70 AD? They got kicked out of their homeland by the Romans. The Romans invaded Judea in the land of Israel, which is our homeland, and they actually murdered and slaughtered them. And Christ warned our people before this happened, and a lot of us, guess what we fled to? To avoid that uh, destruction and war that was coming. Guess what we fled to? We fled down to Africa. Because Africa is right there where our homeland is, sis. All right, and guess what? We was able to blend in with the other dark-skinned races. Because we the Jews, we look like the people of Ham, even though we're Shemitic. We look like Ham. We got similarities, but we're not the same people. But that's how we were able to blend in with them. But read what you got. Luke chapter 21, verse 20. Go ahead. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies. This is Christ warning his disciples. Christ warned his disciples of Titus Vespasian and what was the other guy's name? It was Titus Vespasian. It was two Roman generals. After Christ died, 70 years later, this Christ is prophesying this is going to happen. Rome is going to come. They're going to besiege Jerusalem. They're going to tear down these walls because the prophecies of the Bible has to be fulfilled of you guys being scattered throughout the four corners of the world as slaves. This was a judgment that God prophesied he had put on his people. And Christ was giving them that warning. And he was like, hey, this is going to happen. So y'all take heed to it. And this is what you need to do. Read. Then know that the desolation thereof is not. He says, then know when you see that army coming, that the destruction, that's what the word desolation means. The destruction of Jerusalem is near to come. Read. Verse 21. Read. Yeah, Christ. He said, if you're in Judea, if you're here, when you see this happening, you need to flee. If you get out of the country. Because nobody is not going to be good. If you're a woman, it's not going to be no mercy. That army is coming to kill women, infant, children, old and young. And that's what happened in history, our history. Read. This is before we ended up in Africa. All right, read on. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Read. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein, therein too. It says if you're in the countries on the outskirts, don't try to make your way back. Don't try to come back because you're going to be part of this destruction. You and your family. So he, Christ, as the leader of our people, as the leader of our race, like you see we had a president of the United States, it's like him giving a mass warning like, hey, in, in five days, nuclear war is going to happen. So you guys need to evacuate. These are the evacuation centers. That's where y'all need to go. And if you're already there, don't try to come out. Because when that fifth day comes, it's going to be no escape. Them nuclear missiles coming, you have, you're going to have nowhere to, nowhere to go. This is Christ warning his people the same way because he is our leader. And he gave us a warning as the leader of our nation because he looked out for us.
nation is men leading by example. Is you. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord!